Um, welcome back from lunch, everybody. Uh, so I think we're gonna, it'll probably be a little bit different of a presentation than most of the stuff this morning. So it should be fun, right? Pizza is a fun food. So hopefully this will be a pretty fun presentation. Uh, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about Dom, who's our uh, virtual assistant, who's relatively a new, um, I guess we like to think of him almost as an employee, to the Domino's system. So I'll talk to you and uh, tell you, you know, why, for starters, why Dom, a virtual assistant, makes sense for Domino's. Uh, a little bit about how he actually made his way into our apps, and uh, maybe even a little bit about how he's doing. Um, you can see, since I am in marketing, marketing guys cannot manage to just stand behind a microphone, so I am gonna probably wander around a little bit. Um, and we are gonna try and do a live demo, um, which, you know, if you conference 101, right, never actually try and do a live technology demo. Um, yeah, I've never actually listened to that, so we'll see how that goes. Okay, so, in order to really understand why we incorporated a virtual assistant into our ordering apps, you really need to understand a little bit about Domino. So we're gonna take five minutes and do basically a blitzkrieg around why Domino's is standing up talking about a virtual assistant in a technology conference, which into itself is kind of a weird sentence, right? So about four years ago, the brand really started going through a reinvention. And I'm guessing almost everyone in the entire room remembers the TV spot. Right, uh, we, you know, it really kicked off a reinvention of what was a kind of old, staid brand, right? And you probably recognize, you know, this uh, TV spot went something like, yeah, Domino's pizza tastes like cardboard, right? And we are gonna reinvent it. And we did, we reinvented it basically from the top down, new crust, new cheese, new sauce, the whole nine yards, right? But it was really formed from a strategy which was much deeper than that. And it was a strategy which was perfectly timed. It was perfectly timed for what was going on in the economy at the time, right? No one trusted basically anything, anything to do with the government, anything to do with companies, right? And here was a company, Domino's Pizza, which had been around forever, putting out a TV commercial that says, our pizza tastes like cardboard. And as you can imagine, that kind of got people's attention, right? Now it's important because it really set for us what was a strategy that we've now been following for the last five years, right? And the strategy is really around kind of this, this theme, right? We are gonna be an unexpectedly real and transparent pizza company, right? It doesn't get any more real and transparent than you know, when you say our pizza tastes like cardboard, which I promise is the last time I'm gonna say, because that's no longer true, <laughs> right? So we've changed, we've changed a lot. And Part of that change actually extended into the digital space. Now you ask yourself, okay, I get it, right? Domino's pizza, yeah, a lot of people order pizza. Who cares, right? You're talking about online ordering, right? Most people probably don't think of Domino's pizza when you think of e-commerce companies or technology companies in the United States. All right, fair enough, right? But here are some of the benefits that happen when a customer orders Domino's pizza through a digital channel. Customer satisfaction goes up. Who's ever had a bad experience when you call your pizza company, right? And either the person, English maybe isn't their first language. Anybody from New York, right? Right off the bat, okay? Probably San Francisco too. Um, or you feel rushed, like you get somebody on the phone, they're really busy, there's a lot of stuff going on in the store. You're like, ah, I'm not sure what pizza I want. I'll call you back, right? Yeah, so, okay, right off the bat, better consumer experience, right? Customer satisfaction goes up. Franchisees make more money. Customers don't feel rushed. They get to order what they want, right? They get to browse the menu. They get to create their perfect pizza. They actually have a better experience. They try more products. Franchisees make more money. Domino's, the company, makes more money. Customer is happier, right? This is a win-win-win across the board. Getting our customers to order in the digital channel makes a ton of sense for Domino's, the company. All right, so that makes sense. So how big are we talking about here? Wow, I'm guessing there are a couple people in the room that are a bit surprised by some of those stats. 45% of our orders right now are coming through the digital space. Yeah, wow, okay? That billion dollar plus is not even a close estimate anymore. From a transaction standpoint, that would put us in the top 10 e-commerce companies in the United States from a number of transactions per year, right? Okay, now I'm guessing some people are shaking their heads going, now I understand why Domino's a pizza company is potentially talking about a virtual assistant from an ordering standpoint, 
right? Digital is big business for us. Whoever owns this space is going to win, right? Why? Because if we can use technology to drive a better consumer experience, it drives results. And it drives results in our business in a big way, right? So a couple of examples. And I'm guessing if anybody hasn't ordered Domino's Pizza, a couple of these things are going to be a bit of a surprise, right? One, when you order Domino's Pizza online, you can actually track that pizza from the ordering experience directly to your door, spot by spot by spot. It is not smoke and mirrors. Every single store in the United States is connected to the same point of sale system. Every single store in the United States, every single step along the way is connected and recorded. And the entire thing is available for the consumer to see online. That's pretty cool, right? So now when you sit and you order Domino's Pizza online, you know when your driver has left the store and is about to arrive at your house. So you can worry about the wash or the dishes or taking care of the kids or whatever, and you know John has left the store with your pizza. You also, by the way, know who made your pizza because all that information is available for us and we make it available for our consumers, right? Again, improving the consumer experience because before this, you used to call on the phone, right? You used to hang up the phone and you used to wonder, huh, I wonder how long it's gonna be till my pizza shows up. Is anybody even making my pizza? Does anybody even have any idea where I live, right? And you would sit there and wonder and wonder and wonder until magically there'd be a knock on your door and you'd be like, awesome, they actually got my pizza, right? Now you can track the entire thing. We are basically the FedEx of pizza, right? Which is really cool. Totally interconnected to our entire point of sale system. Here's another one, Pizza Profiles, launched uh, about two years ago now. Significantly simplifies the pizza ordering experience. Now, there's nothing, no rocket science here, right? We basically allow consumers to sign in through that process. We save all the information that's needed in order for you to basically place a reorder. Interestingly, it's a little more complex than it is on a normal e-commerce site because you're a franchised organization with different stores, pricing, products, coupons. But even still, right, not rocket science, but significantly improves the consumer experience because now, instead of it taking 25 clicks in order for you to do a basic, simple pizza order, it takes four. All right, that makes a ton of sense from a consumer experience standpoint. And now voice ordering, right? So hopefully you can see the logical progression of technology and how it's improving our consumer experience through our ordering channels. So that's a little history 101 of Domino's. So now let's talk a little bit about Dom. And that's Dom. Dom actually is a persona. Don, Dom is basically a character. We think of him as almost an employee at Domino's. He's available on both of our apps, iPhone and Android. Right? And he is basically fully integrated into the ordering experience. So what does that mean? Well, before we talk about what that means, let's talk about why? Why was this such a fun and interesting project for starters, right? So for starters, pizza, although everyone thinks about, yeah, pizza is a pretty simple food, right? If you go on our website, there are really only 25 SKUs on our website. That's it. Amazon, I don't even know what Amazon's total is anymore, right? There's 25. Unfortunately, one of those products, or fortunately, I guess, depending upon how you look at it, is infinitely customizable or pretty close. It's not actually infinite. It's actually that number at the bottom. Right? In case you're counting, there are 24 zeros. Also, in case you're wondering, that's more meals than human beings have eaten since we've existed as a species. That's how many pizzas, different pizzas, you can make in a standard Domino's store. Right? Pretty complicated product, but it's really pretty simple. So there's a really interesting thing going on there. Customers have been ordering voice or ordering pizza through voice from the very start. Right? When Domino's first opened its store, Customers ordered by picking up the phone and calling the store. They know how to use their voice to order pizza. Using a voice digital assistant or virtual assistant allowed us to break what have been some very solid, specific digital constraints, right? There's a process you need to go through when you order online. The biggest constraint is I need to know what store you're gonna be ordering from, why? Well, because we are a franchise system, every store has different products, different pricing, different toppings, different coupons, different promotions, right? It's really important for me to know, can I actually deliver to the location you want us to deliver to? 
Stores have a very limited delivery area. If you're outside the delivery area, I can't deliver to you, right? That process is really specific. You have to go through certain steps in a certain order. A virtual assistant allows us to blow that up, right? Which is great because, strangely enough, customers don't think of the pizza ordering process that way, right? They don't understand why do you care what store I'm at. I want to tell you what pizza I want first, All right? So it allows us to flip the equation around. Um, voice for us is really a foundational technology. It is a starting point. Learning about voice is like opening a door to a whole new world. Everything that comes beyond this for us is going to involve voice. It is incredibly foundational to everything we want to do in technology. And the last one is probably one we haven't talked about a lot as a group, but it's voice technology and DOM carries with it a lot of branding. Right? It's a very nice combination of, wow, look at how amazing this technology is, and look at what it says about us as a brand. And hopefully you're going to see a little of that come through as we go through the, uh, the demo. All right. The other key thing, and uh, spy the, yes, it is a spider web, right, behind it. This process, DOM, the process, is fully integrated into our ordering experience. Right? It's not a layer that sits above it. You can go in and out of voice anywhere in our experience, and the process will remain the same. You can start with voice and all of a sudden take a detour and tap and come back to voice. You can start by tap and go to voice and go back out from an ordering standpoint, right? Anywhere you go throughout the entire thing, it's integrated. And as you can imagine, and you'll see in a second, that creates a pretty complicated set of things you need to be worrying about from a programming standpoint. And we'll come back and talk about that in a second. All right, so a couple of other things. Comparison versus other projects, right? So one of the things I asked was like, well, you know, when Dan was doing this, he's like, well, tell us about what, how this implementation went to everything else you do. I can tell you right off the bat, right? It's, you know, I'll start with the bottom, maybe work our way up, okay? It was way harder, it took way longer, and was probably way more expensive than we ever thought it would be, all right? That's, when you're gonna change the game, that's sometimes what it takes, right? Totally worth it, it was totally worth it. Um, allowed us to really push our technology in ways we had never done before from an ordering experience standpoint. Um, and I know there are a lot of nuanced folks in the thing. This is not, you know, I don't typically push partners as a general rule. Um, nuance did an amazing job, actually. Um, working with us, I think they pushed their technology as much as we pushed ours. All right? And that's hard to find partners that are willing to do that. So thank you to the nuanced folks. Uh, and it was a, just a huge learning curve across the board. All right? This really is, if not cutting edge, pretty damn close. Right? And we are doing things that I think no one else has really done as far as integrating voice into an ordering experience. All right, so now I'm gonna try and demo it. Everybody keep your fingers crossed. Let's see how this works. Well, that's a good start. All right. Okay, somebody give me a pizza you'd want to order. Okay, extra large pepperoni, fine, boring. Hi, welcome back to Domino's. Would you like to order your easy order or a recent order? Or will you be placing a new order today? New order. Sounds good. Do you want delivery or carry out? Carry out. Say the red number next to one of the stores, or say, use a saved address. You can also type a new location in the bar above. Store 2. Now, let's build your order. You can say something like large pizza with pepperoni, onions, and green peppers. So what can I get you? Extra large pepperoni. Pizza added. What can I get you next? All right, so we're going to pause him there for a second. All right, so a couple things happened there. So this was basically, now I, I was logged in from the beginning, so it's a slightly different screen than a, a, a completely new customer would see, but I'll show you why in a second. Right, so customer was able to basically guide it through the entire process, right, walks you through and explains what's going on. A couple things are going on behind the scenes, connected you to a store, right, was able to understand whether or not, you know, you, what stores were closest 
So all using the GPS, simplifying a bunch of steps, right? Immediately, all you need to do is say extra large and pepperoni. It infers that that was a pizza. It also infers a whole bunch of defaults. So that eight times all of those zeros basically simplified itself significantly, right? Because that's what customers do when they call you on the phone. They don't necessarily tell you everything. A lot of times you infer what the other steps are. And like that, we added a product to the cart. Now, that's not it, right? So there's a lot more complexity that goes into ordering a pizza. So now let's see how much fun we can have here. Let's see if we can get them a little bit confused. I like a medium hat. Oops. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. Could you repeat it? Medium hand top. I still didn't catch that. Please try again. And that would be why we don't do live demos. <laughs> All right, we're going to start it. I'm having a hard time hearing. New order. Sounds good. Do you want delivery? Like I said, we can just tap through. There what can I get you next? A medium pan pizza with peppers. We have green peppers, jalapeno peppers, roasted red peppers, and banana peppers. What kind would you like? Banana peppers. I got banana peppers. Fine choices. Any other toppings? No. Pizza added. What can I get you next? Do you have any chicken? Coming right up. Which one looks good? Boneless chicken. What size? Eight piece. Boneless chicken added. What's the next item you'd like? Tell me a joke. A pizza walks into a bar and orders a drink. The bartender says, we don't serve food here. Boneless chicken added. What's oh, the next on. item you'd like? <laughs> what did you do last weekend? What size? Oh, I didn't like that. What would you like next? What do you eat? OK, what style of wings would you like? All right, so we're going to pause them there. All right, so a couple sorry, things. I didn't hear that. Could you repeat it? Stop. All right, let's go back. OK, a couple things there. One, ambiguity, right? When I ordered a pizza with peppers, he was actually smart enough to know the store that I was connected to has multiple peppers from a topping standpoint. Green peppers, red peppers, banana peppers, jalapeno peppers, right? So he's smart enough to come back and actually tell you, here's your choices, I need to know what you want. Pretty interesting. You could start adding pizzas as complex as you want right off the bat. You could basically say large thin crust with whatever toppings, okay? Didn't have to go step by step by step. That's how customers talk to us when they call us on the phone. That's how Dom can actually add products, right? Which is great. Product exploration. I did the, do you have any chicken? Right, now all of a sudden, Dom doesn't, or the customer doesn't need to know how to navigate your site or where our products are within a, any kind of structure. Instantly, Dom was able to take you to the products which were involved with chicken. The other last part, the tell me a joke, right? A little bit of personality from a branding standpoint. He has jokes, he tells you about his weekend, he can tell you his name, how he came about, all sorts of fun things. Much like when customers interact with Siri, right? They all of a sudden ask all sorts of strange things. Dom has all sorts of responses to all sorts of interesting questions. Interestingly enough, they all come back to pizza, right? Because Dom is very focused on pizza, right? That's our character. You also notice he's a little fun. He's got a little bit of personality. He basically is a representation of all of the people that work in our stores, right? Pizza is not a serious food. Our character, our little virtual assistant, should not be a serious, uptight character. He's got little sayings that he talks throughout the entire experience, right? It's supposed to be very conversational and fun. And we really believe that comes through as part of the experience. All right, so hopefully we did all these things. Uh, 
Oh, I didn't do the easy order one, right? You can also basically, right from the start, say easy order. That's it. Yeah, it was the first thing. If I had said easy order, you basically would have gone straight through the process in one step, which is actually kind of cool. All right, so what do consumers think? Right? Um, here's a couple of quotes. We've done, obviously, a lot of research. This is a completely new technology for us, so we put it in front of a lot of consumers. Right? A lot of really great things. You can always pull quotes out from any kind of experience. Right? Um, a lot of this, wow, this is so cool. I, I would definitely use it. This is really kind of changes the game on how I'd order pizza, which is kind of fun. Right? But here are the keys. When you really dig down, these are the things that consumers are saying. One, it's faster. Right? It appears faster. The functionality makes pizza ordering appear faster for a consumer. And that's a big win for us. Right? It's both the perceived savings, and the funny thing is when you measure it, it's actually an actual savings. Using your voice is a faster way to order pizza than tapping through using our digital channels. Which also goes to the second one. It's simpler, right? This is how consumers are used to interacting with our brand when they call on the phone. Voice should work the same way. It's also easier, right? It seems very natural and intuitive to our consumers. There's not a lot of training. Once they understand that I can actually just basically tell you the pizza I want, they're like, oh, I totally get it. And they're off and running. Customers do not need a lot of training, surprisingly enough, in how to order a pizza, right? They know the pizza they like. They know how to order it. Once they understand, hey, I can just tell you everything I want, they're more than happy to do that. And then, as you can imagine, after seeing the brand, you know, the little, how the character interacts, really good brand impact, right? This is a really good technology impact. Customers have never seen a brand try and put a digital character or a virtual assistant into their ordering experience like this, right? And then the brand itself, the character of, you know, Dom, really says a lot of good things about the brand. Um, so here's a recent quote. Uh, it's kind of an interesting one. Um, when I saw it, I was like, oh, I've got to use this because it's just great, right? So someone recently described our company as a technology company, right? Disguised as a marketing company, disguised as a pizza company, right? And I love this quote because it really talks to who we are becoming as a company, right? In order for us to, su to succeed, in order for us to be the best pizza company we can be, we're going to have to be a good marketing company. But that hasn't really changed over the years, right? That's existed for a really long time. But in order for us to really do that well, we're going to have to be a technology company. And that's where the difference is being made right now, right? And that space is changing really fast, and it's changing with capabilities and technologies like a virtual voice assistant. All right, so I think that's it. Um, I think we have some time for questions. A couple minutes, 10 minutes. So questions. Yeah, so um, that's a great question. Why harder, why more expensive, and why more time, right? Um, so we talked a little bit about how the experience is integrated actually into the technology, which is our ordering process. Figuring out all of the pieces and parts on how to do that ended up being a lot of work. Uh, it's a big learning curve on trying to figure that out. Once you kind of got it down, and going from there was fine, but that initial learning curve was really steep. Um, I think on both sides, right? I think we learned as much as Nuance did on how you actually integrate a voice process into a, an ordering system the way we have. One that's more than just, you know, I'd like product A, product B. I like product A, you know, back and forth. Pizza ordering actually has some pretty deep pathways that you have to follow through and keep track of, right? There's a lot of constraints that come in and out of the system in the process and making sure all of that worked is, uh, was a lot of work. As you can imagine, the worst, the worst possible scenario here would be to allow Dom to create pizzas that would be ordered at the store that the franchisee could not make, right? And that's what you have to really guard for. Guard for. Yes? Yeah, so the, the question was, did it start as a, a, a voiceless application? Um, yeah, so Domino's has had uh, vo uh, ordering apps, so our iPhone and Android apps, uh, for about, depending, depending upon which of the two apps, two and a half or two years. So we've had ordering applications for a while. 
Uh, and I will tell you, you know, they, you know, that 45% is digital. About half of that is actually coming through our mobile channels right now. So they're they're both relatively large applications. So yeah, they started as non-voice, and we layered the voice into the process. Um, still very early stages. Um, actually, the version I just showed you. Uh, yeah, so the, the question was, what was the growth rate? Uh, the version I actually just demoed is, is actually not the version that is currently available. It's uh, sitting in the App Store right now waiting to be approved. So, and it will be the first one that actually takes a little, the beta symbol off of DOM. So DOM is actually going live and in full color um, as of right now. Uh, he has been in basically beta stage for about the last three to four months as we've been learning. So there hasn't been a big push to actually drive a lot of people through it. Um, you know, as much as a learning curve there was in integrating him into the technology, there's been a learning curve and an evolution. You know, he is going through the process of understanding how consumers were going to interact with him, were there things we needed to change. We've been adding more functionality, and he is now fully ready for prime time. So we'll see how fast he grows from now. We're super happy with how fast the usage has been going so far. Consumers seem very happy with it. I guess I have a follow-on question to that. Um, voice. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I, when I was, I've used the app, and I was really impressed at how the, the, the voice interaction part is integrated with kind of a really rich user interface. So it sounds like maybe you started out with, with the app that did, where you could order everything through you know, touch without having the, the, uh, the assistant. Um, and I was, I'm just curious, how important do you think it is to continue to have that sort of that rich um, visual interaction and where the where the user can can order basically without using voice and now that the once you have the assistant it becomes more capable do you see that kind of the the app itself transitioning you know more more stuff being done with voice and less with the kind of the visual type of IVR type thing or yeah it's a great question um, right now I think we see the voice and the what you would consider to be the visual application probably living together for a period of time. Um, really, we want to learn about voice. We want to learn about voice because the whole next set and slew of products or technologies that are coming, a lot of them are not going to have a screen, right? We want customers to be able to order our pizza using any technology that's out there that could be an ordering platform. Part of that is going to be, and it's going to mean a voice interface. So for us, it's really learning about where those, you know, where are the hurdles that customers run into as they're going through that process that we need to make sure we're taking into account. And the easiest way for us to learn that is to have both of them kind of living together for now. And we'll see as they continue to evolve. Uh, I think it's a very logical expectation to think voice is going to continue to gain from a functionality standpoint uh, and may at some point completely remove the, the visual aspect. No estimates on how long, though. So uh, the real question is, how much trouble did you have integrating the two voice and visual components uh, together? Because I know inside our own company, that's one of the biggest challenges is to get the, you know, the, the web and app to people think touch, move, hierarchy from point to point, whereas the speech people are often in another land where you can talk to it and everything's invisible to the user. Yeah. So how did you get those two to, to meet? Yeah, it, it very much changed our entire mindset on how you put together the, the digital ordering platforms, right? Um, the two have got to be able to live. Like, there's, you don't want to do something that's going to really mess up what is basically the, you know, I'll refer to it as the visual or the touch experience, right? There's a lot of orders going through that experience, right? It cannot throw that under the bus in, in order to make a great voice experience. So the two have got to work together. And you can see that the process is really designed that you can start in one, flip to the other, and flip back at any point. And that was really kind of our, our objective throughout the entire thing. We didn't want to create what is basically a, a voice-only experience, because you would have lost a lot of functionality. And we didn't want to create one that really ruined the touch components of what is already the existing app. So yeah, there, a very different mindset shift had to occur as you were, we were thinking about how those two things would live together. It really creates, um, you know, where there are a lot of guardrails in a system. You know, if you move a customer from step A to step B to step C, it's easy to put very fine guardrails in place, right, through that process to make sure they're not doing anything wrong. You end up blowing all of that up, 
when you go to voice, right? All of a sudden you come in and customers want to go from step A to step D and then back to B and then they're going to go B again and then back to D and all of a sudden all your guardrails have completely disappeared. And so we've really had to change the way we think of a whole lot of stuff on how we program our sites. Oh, yes. um, I just want to start off by thanking you. I didn't even know about the speech thing. I just saw it on my app. Um, I, order, yes. I order from you guys all the time. Through the One app. down, two million more to go. <laughs> um, no, you, because when you guys rebranded the website and I, I ordered my first you know, re, you know, redone Domino's, I switched over from Pizza Hut and I've only ordered from Domino's ever since. Yay. You know, I'm from Philly, so we just ordered. Round of applause. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, but for me, like, I've naturally progressed from the website to the app now, and now that I see the voice text, and I've been big on wearable technology these days, and I was wondering, are you guys working on now integrating it to the watch and the glasses at all? Because I would love to walk down the street and just be like, here, order my pizza right now. <laughs> uh, no comment. Okay. How's that? <laughs> right, um, so hopefully you got, you got a gist of you know, when we talked about the tracker to profiles to DOM, right? We are going to be in the platforms and the way customers want to order their pizza. Um, you know, you're, you've seen an explosion of, you know, what is being referred to as wearables right now. Um, I, I think that would be a logical expectation that that would be of interest to us. Yep. You made a decision that I needed to choose the store before I chose my pizza. What if I want a pizza that doesn't exist at the store I chose. Yeah, All that's. I, I'm, I'm calling up. I want a pizza with these specific things. It's going to come to me. I don't really want to have to worry about which store it comes from. Correct. Yeah, that, and that is actually part of the problem with um, the ordering platforms right now within pizza. Right? There is, if you're getting delivery, there's only one store that can deliver to an address. If that store does not have the capability to make the pizza you want, it's just, there is no other option. Right? You can now carry out, you can pick different carry out stores, but that is actually one of the limitations that exists within our process because we set certain criteria around how long it's going to take that pizza to get to a consumer. Right? Uh, we don't have customer, we don't have delivery drivers driving halfway across the state. Right? They have a very small distance they can deliver to. Uh, and if that pizza is not an available, that's part of the reason why we have to put all those guardrails in place. Right? We really don't want the customer to go through the entire experience actually have their entire pizza made, hit checkout, and then we pop up the pop-up that says, yeah, sorry, we can't do that pizza. Right? That's, that's a bad consumer experience. What can I get you next? <laughs> Seriously, I did not Since do that. we couldn't do that. <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> Wait, we have one more question. Yeah, can you tell me what I told what you he was very determined about ordering pizza, right? Can you tell me what your plans are on rolling out this technology over the next two years? Oh, no. <laughs> How's that? Um, honestly, uh, let's see, how do I put this? Um, we are going to be focused in technology, right? Um, the quote at the end was, was only a little bit. You know, I, I love the quote because it does talk about us as being a technology company. Right? Um, we're really not that different from other e-commerce companies. If you see the growth rate, you know, we talked about more than 45% of our sales are coming through the digital channels. Right? That projection, in the near future, in the very near future, more than half. Half of our sales in the United States are going to be coming through our digital channels. There are several dominoes in multiple countries around the world where more than half of their sales are coming through digital channels. We're an e-commerce company. Right? The reality of it is when more than half of your sales are coming through digital channels, you're an e-commerce company. We're a technology company. The product we sell is pizza. Right? So we, people may refer to us as a pizza company, but at its base now, we are a technology and e-commerce company. We've got to be winning in that space. It's going to make the difference between who we are as a company and how we succeed over the next generation, the next decade. Right? The companies that exist and really win in the digital space are the companies that'll be around a decade from now, All right? So that, that is our you know, objective. If it's gonna be something that wins in the digital space, we're gonna be doing it. So thank you so much.